guys, welcome back to my channel and another episode of the best of 2014. Today is going to be all about eyeshadows, singles, and palettes. 2014 had a lot of new releases, but these are the best of the best. I have some drugstore, affordable, middle range, and then some incredibly expensive ones. So I thought I would just share with you guys what I've been loving in terms of eyeshadows for 2014. And of course, as always, I will have all the products listed in the description box as well. I have so many things to go through, so let's get started. Starting off, I have been obsessed with the ColourPop eyeshadows. These are so incredibly rich and pigmented. They're unlike anything I've ever felt before. The texture is creamy, but it goes on like powder, but the pigmentation is like an intense cream that's very blendable. It's not quite wet, not quite dry. They have satins, metallics, shimmers. They just came out with the matte, and if you guys want full swatches of all of these shadows, I have a blog post so you can really take the time and look at the colors. I also have just gotten a bunch of the new matte shadows that they just launched and I will have a detailed blog post linked in the description box as well with swatches and everything. Next up from the drugstore are the Milani Bella shadows. These are single shadows and they are supposed to be a gel shadow but they're really more like just a creamy powder in my opinion and they launched a whole collection of these in 2014 and I think these are really great drugstore affordable options but these are very pigmented, very creamy, very blendable, very smooth and I just think they're something unique that I haven't seen from the drugstores and they're very high quality pigmented eyeshadows that are quite affordable if you're looking for something in the drugstore price range. Zero One is Bella Ivory. I have Bella Sand in Zero Two and have Bella Cappuccino. I would compare it to Max Soft Brown. Bella Bronze, reddish bronzy shade. Bella Champagne, which is one of my favorite shades. And it in Bella Charcoal, which is number 11. Bella Emerald, which is this beautiful emerald green shade. And I just think it's so beautiful, you guys. Now, one more kind of drugstore priced item. If you are looking for a neutral matte palette, I find that those are the hardest to find at a drugstore. But I discovered the Sonia Kashuk Eye on Neutral Matte 02. Now Sonia Kashuk I feel like is hit or miss a lot of the times, but this palette is a total hit. This is the most beautiful, formulated, pigmented, every shade in here is very comparable. This one is very, very balanced. You're going to have a beautiful collection of evenly pigmented, blendable, matte neutral eyeshadows all for about $20. It, I believe it's about $18, but depending where you are, plus tax, whatever, it's going to come out to be about $20. Bucks. And I just think it's definitely worth the investment if you're looking for something in the drugstore price range. 2014 was the discovery of Makeup Geek for me. and. Can you guys tell I like Makeup Geek a little bit? Other than just Makeup Geek and having such affordable shadows that are comparable to MAC shadows, if not, I think a little bit better than the MAC shadows, she came out with the Foils collection. And the Makeup Geek Foil eyeshadows are so freaking amazing, you guys. I don't know how she does it. They are a little bit pricier, but they're still cheaper than any MAC shadow you're gonna get. Five, I have five of the foiled shadows, so half of the collection. But they are so, so, so beautiful. And you just really, really need to get your hands on these. I have Houdini, which is this beautiful emerald green. I have Center Stage, which is a beautiful, bluish shadow. I have Magic Act, which is a beautiful gold. I have In the Spotlight, which is a rose gold. And then I have Mesmerized, which is this purple toned gray shade and I just love it. I also have a ton of other of Makeup Geek shadows that she has had for a while. Moving up in the price range, I'm gonna have to give the Lorac Mega Pro a shout out. 
This is to die for. This was sadly very quickly sold out and difficult to get your hands on if you missed out on it. But I feel like I have to share it with you guys because Lorac really outdid themselves in the Pro collection. They came out with Lorac Pro 2 and they came out with this one. These shades are just so beautiful. You get a really good mix of mattes, a really good mix of shimmers, a really good mix of neutrals, pops of colors, all the... Ugh. Just, oh, just, oh, guys, I really hope she brings this back out and that you guys can get this again. I really, really hope they launch this as like part of their pro collection. Moving up in the price range again, I am talking about the Makeup Forever Artist Shadows. These are amazing. They are pricey at $22 each. I don't like the way they name them because it's a little too complicated to remember and I feel like I'm going to buy doubles of these because I'm going to forget that I have it at home. Um, but these are so beautiful. They are so, so richly pigmented. They are creamy. They can be used wet or dry. They are truly for the makeup artist or the makeup lover out there. Um, definitely an investment, but just so beautiful, so creamy, so blendable, so versatile to work with, and truly an artist shadow. NARS came out with their dual intensity eyeshadows this year and they are definitely dual intensity, very intense. They can be used wet or dry. They're very pigmented, very creamy. They look definitely like two shadows in one. These are pricey up in the $30 range. Not something I would say everybody needs, but something that if you are looking for just that one pop of color, special occasion, evening out, if you are a makeup artist who does high fashion or editorial makeup, this is something I would see you wanting in your makeup kit, but not something that any everyday person needs. But I did want to give NARS a shout out for coming out with such a great formulation and something that can be used wet or dry, perfect packaging, very metallic in this line. And I have Gia, which is a beautiful blue. I was really into cool blues this year. Himalaya, which is this beautiful shimmery, silverish, nude shade. Phoebe, which is this beautiful purple, iridescent purple shade that is really fun to work with. I also have it in Lysthea, which is a silver. This is a, if you're going to get any of these, I would say maybe get either Himalaya or Lysthea, which is the silver because I find it a little bit more versatile than the pop of blue or the pop of purple. 2014 was kind of the year of Tom Ford for me. It's when I finally decided to splurge on some Tom Ford products and then I became addicted and I couldn't stop splur splurging on it. So Tom Ford came out with these cream color for eyes. I purchased Spice, which is so freaking beautiful. I wear this by itself all the time. If I want a no fuss eye makeup look, this is literally what I just rub into my eyes. The a little goes such a long way, you guys, literally like just a little pin drop and you're gonna cover your whole eye. My shade or darker, you're gonna wanna get Spice. It's so beautiful on the eyes and very, very great to use as a base to mix it with some of the powder shadows. If you are fairer than me, if you're very, very pale and you have a pink undertone, I would suggest getting Platinum. Platinum is what I'm wearing today as my base and it's very beautiful. It looks really, really pretty. It does the same effect as Spice if you're a little bit more fair, a little bit more pinky toned, but I also like using this as a base for m the rest of my darker looks. So again, a little goes a long way. It's very long lasting, very, very rich and creamy. It reminds me of whipped cream cheese if that makes any sense. Uh, so these are definitely investment pieces, but you're gonna get your money's worth because of how little product you need to cover your whole eye, how long they last, and they're just so luxurious, so beautiful. One of my favorite higher-end cream shadows that I've seen out there. The last eyeshadow palette situation I want to talk about is the Tom Ford Coco Mirage palette. This is the perfect neutral eyeshadow palette, perfect everyday eyeshadow palette. I wear this almost every day. I love this. It's my perfect go-to everyday look. I found a dupe for this. If you can still find the palette, it is the Urban Decay Pulp 
Fiction eyeshadow quad. So make sure you get that if you can still find it. I know it was on sale for a little bit for at least at like about $16. I did a whole blog post with swatches, which I will link in the description box below because definitely check that out. If you can find that palette, it is the perfect dupe for this Tom Ford Coco Mirage palette. The pigmentation is about the same. I feel like Urban Decay really outdid themselves with the pigmentation for the Pulp Fiction palette. I think it's better than the Naked palettes. I think it's better than the Vice palettes. So that is why I think it is a dupe and the shades are very similar to each other. But if you are looking for a splurge on something that you're going to use every day, I would recommend trying out the Tom Ford Coco Mirage because it is, it is definitely a luxury, high-end splurge item. But I wanted to pick a splurge item that you could use every day and that would be the Coco Mirage. So that is my wrap up of the eye products or eyeshadow products of 2014. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out all of the products linked in the description box as well as their coordinating videos or swatch blog post. You can check out everything in details there. I really appreciate everybody watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you've been liking the series, make sure you check out all of the rest of the other videos I've already uploaded in the series. So thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing supporting my channel and I will see you guys soon. Bye! Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another installment of the best of 2014 makeup products. Today I'm going to be talking about powder foundations.